What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Uh, one of the most common questions that I get is uh, what it will take to charge up basic portable devices um, with solar. And uh, you know, this, uh, these obviously aren't going to be critically important if, if we're in a disaster type scenario. But uh, you know, what if you're out boondocking and in your RV or you're at an off-grid cabin or on vacation or something like that? Like, so I get a lot of questions. What, how much solar do I need to power my electronic devices? Is it possible? And so forth. So what I've got here, I've got three different devices. I've got a cell phone, I've got a tablet, and I've got a laptop. And so I've got my normal uh, equipment hooked up here. We've got a 100 watt solar panel. We've got our test uh, equipment with the gauge and everything. And then we've got a 400 watt inverter. And I've hooked up a power strip here so we can plug everything in and see what's going on. So let's get started. These are probably the three most common devices you're going to need to charge up. Can you do them all three at the same time? Uh, kind of what are, what's typical here? So I've got a just a, f a cheapo flip phone. I've got an iPad. Uh, sorry, an iPad, and then just a uh, run-of-the-mill laptop. So let's start with the laptop. I've got that one already plugged in here. Just need to flip on the uh, the power strip. But before I do, I want to give you a baseline of what we're looking at with the uh, power consumption. So right now the battery is uh, at 13.7 volts and the consumption of the inverter is about 0.7 amps. So that's our baseline with no load and uh, we've got our kilowatt meter here I'm going to switch it to watts and it's it's only consuming about half a watt so as soon as we switch on this it will start charging the laptop and there we go finally okay so it's charging right now at about 23 watts and it is just charging the laptop so that's very easily doable with solar that that's pretty much nothing you could do that with a really small panel but what happens if we add more devices so we've got a an iPad here so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into the power strip and add that to the mix Okay, interestingly, this didn't want to charge through the little brick here, but it will charge off of the 5 volt uh, USB on the inverter. So whatever, good enough. We're just not going to be able to see it come in on the kilowatt meter. But we can see what it's doing here. So with, with both of those charging, it's really not taxing this at all. We're still well above 13 volts and it's drawing 3 amps. So let's plug in the cell phone as well. For the last device okay so it is charging the red lights on this one's charging laptops charging so that barely bumped uh, the uh, the kilowatt up at all we're at about 20 27, 27 and a half watts, um, and this is probably pulling another, you know, five watts, something like that. So, again, we're not even taxing this thing. And I wanted to do this to show you that you could probably uh, charge multiple laptops, multiple tablets, and you know, a half dozen phones off of this one 100 watt solar panel if you if you needed to. Um, you might need a slightly bigger battery to, to act as a better buffer, but while the sun's out, you could, you could run quite a few uh, devices off of this 100 watt solar panel. Anyway, uh, that's, that's the, by, by far the most common question that I get about solar, um, is charging these small electronic devices, and it's a perfect use for this, and, uh, hopefully you guys have learned and, and it's answered some of your questions about that. Thanks for watching.